Good day everyone and welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we're going to talk about catch cans. This is a hotly debated topic because there's some people that say you really need them and there's other people that say you don't need them. So like I said, it's a hotly debated topic and hopefully at the end of this video, you will be able to make an informed decision on your own and you can decide if you wanna buy one or you don't wanna buy one. Now, if you're already in the market to buy one, uh, and this is what they look like. Basically, they all kind of look the same. I highly suggest you take a look at this video because it's all about catch can design and what makes a good catch can so you can prevent yourself from getting ripped off. Uh, now, briefly, what does a catch can do? Very, very briefly, all it does is it removes the oil vapors uh, from the intake stream coming into your engine. They're supposed to prevent uh, coking of your valves or uh, you know carbon buildup in your engine. That's what they're supposed to do in a nutshell, very, very briefly. So do you need one? So I was able to dig up uh, an article from uh, the Society of Automobile Engineers, so SAE, and what they did was they ran a number of tests. They measured the carbon buildup after each test. They did this by taking the cylinder head apart and actually measuring the valve, so it was pretty cool. Now, what I should say is most manufacturers actually have uh, not a catch can, but an oil separator built in. They, they, they pretty much all do, they have to. So that begs the question, why do you need one if the manufacturer does this? Well, I'll tell you, they're not all created equal and some are more efficient than others. What, what that basically means is some vehicles are more susceptible to having carbon buildup than others. Now, for those of you that have said, because I've read in comments before on forums and stuff like that, that a little bit of oil is good, it can actually lubricate things. My mechanic says it lubricates the valves, false. False. That is totally false. You don't want any oil. Actually, in a perfect world, there would be nothing. It would be just pure air uh, and then gasoline coming in. Toyota says it in their patent themselves. They say the oil should be separated as much as possible. They say it themselves. So that's coming right from a manufacturer. They're saying no oil should be there. So what makes these catch cans more popular now than maybe before? Well, in the beginning, I don't want to say the beginning, but a long time ago, we had carbureted uh, engines. So you had a bunch of fuel coming in with the air and that helped wash everything as it came down. The fuel actually washed the valves. And then when they moved on to port injection, what happened is the fuel injector was located behind the valve, so it washed the valve. But then for the last few years, manufacturers have developed even more efficient engines. And those engines are called direct inject engines. And those engines have the fuel injector located right inside the cylinder. So right inside where the combustion all happens. So now there's nothing to wash that valve off. So because of that, these newer engines are more susceptible to carbon buildup. Okay, so let's get into the highlights of this SAE article. So they did a number of tests, 16,000 kilometers. I'm not sure what the miles is. So I will throw up a conversion for everybody. And during these tests, what they had to do in the beginning was see if they can actually repeat it. Uh, to make sure that all, you know all the parameters uh, were the same. And they did, and I'll throw up the charts, and you can see for the three tests where they ran, you know, back to back, it was all the same, the results were the same. So we can say they are consistent. So what did they do next? They plugged the PCV valve. Now what happened when the PCV valve was plugged? Well, take a look at these charts. The carbon buildup on the valves went right down. So you can see, a lot of the carbon buildup on the valves was caused by the PCV system. And if we look at the chart there, it is actually quite substantial. I think it works out to like a 70% reduction. It's just pretty crazy how much buildup is caused by the PCV system. So I was scouring the internet the other night and I came across this Audi form. So uh, I don't know if a lot of people know, but a lot of German cars are more susceptible to this. I've had to repair uh, a few in the past. Uh, this one here, I'll throw up just a little quick video. It was very dirty and the cause was carbon buildup. Once I cleaned the carbon buildup, the check engine light went away and the engine was misfiring. I mean, that, that was the problem. Now I need you to keep paying attention. Uh, Homer, my face is up here. I've made my choice. Now maybe you've already made your decision and uh, don't zone out on me now, don't zone out. And if you've made your choice, you've made your choice. But whatever you do, don't go crazy because you're overwhelmed and you just don't know what to do. So you get in your car and you try to do a burnout. Now here I'll show a video where you can actually see under high loads what happens and you can see how much oil is developed at high loads. So if you drive your car really hard or you drive your engine hard or you're racing, you're definitely gonna produce more blow by obviously and hey, you can see, you can see what happens in the video. So the big summary of the SAE article, I'll just sum it up real quick because I mean, we're getting long now. We're getting, we're getting just too long now. The big summary is specialized oils did work. So if you have a GDI engine and they call for specific oil, use that type of oil because it actually did help. The other thing is if you drive your car hard, well, you're gonna have more oil.
And the majority of oil found on valves is from the PCV. It's not from the EGR and it's not from the piston rings. So it is from the PCV system. So that concludes the video. So do you have more questions now than you had before? I mean, you may actually have more questions than when you started watching this video. Well, it's really up to you what you decide to do. But the net result was most of the deposits were caused by the PCV system. So if you can put something in the PCV system that reduces that oil vapor in the PCV system, you're going to reduce the deposits on your valves. Now, is it really necessary? Well, that's up to you. There's a lot of cars that get by and they drive 100, 200,000 kilometers without ever even having a problem. And then there's other ones that sometimes just have these problems, you know, when they're still fairly new and you got to take them apart and clean the valves. So it's really up to you what you decide to do. So what I can say as a licensed mechanic, I've never had to rebuild a clean engine. Every engine that I've taken apart has actually been quite dirty. So a cleaner engine probably is a better engine, but I will leave it up to you. And on that note, I will say goodbye uh, over and out, and I hope to see you again next week. Thanks, everyone.